Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Honda Jet Engine receives FAA production certificate. Gamma applauds veterans airlift command. And NASA experiments with electric powered flight. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. The Honda Aero HF120 turbofan engine that powers the Honda Jet and other customer aircraft have been issued a Part 21 production certificate from the FAA. Initial production of the HF120 engines took place at GE's Lynn facility in Massachusetts. At the end of 2014, Honda Aero started assembly of the HF120 under GE Honda Aero engines type certification and with FAA oversight. With this program milestone, HAI's Burlington facility can now produce engines under the HAI production certificate. Honda Aero Incorporated is the first company to be awarded an FAA production certificate for jet engines in the last 23 years. In addition to production of the HF120, HAI Burlington was chosen as the official maintenance, repair, and overhaul site for the engine. Here's another example of general aviation serving a community that needs it the most. The Veterans Airlift Command is a volunteer organization that coordinates a U.S. network of volunteer aircraft owners and pilots to provide free air transportation to post-9-11 combat wounded veterans and their families for medical and other compassionate purposes. Now the General Aviation Manufacturers Association has recognized and congratulated the VAC on flying their 10,000th passenger. Gamma's president and CEO, Pete Bunce, said, quote, The Veterans Airlift Command provides an invaluable service to those brave men and women who've given so much for the defense of freedom. The historic milestone of transporting the 10,000th passenger demonstrates the commitment to warriors wounded or injured during the long war against terrorism and the passion of the general aviation community to support these heroes and their families as long as there is a need, end quote. After the break, NASA experiments with electric powered flight. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Much like everyone in the RC model aircraft business, NASA now has an electric flight project. It's called Leading Edge Asynchronous Propeller Technology, known as LeapTech. Over the next several months, NASA researchers will perform ground testing of a 31-foot span carbon composite wing section with 18 electric motors powered by lithium-ion phosphate batteries. The experimental wing and motor combination is mounted on a specially modified truck. The wing section will remain attached to load cells on a supporting truss, while the vehicle is driven at speeds up to 70 miles per hour across a dry lake bed at Edwards Air Force Base. Researchers hope to fly a piloted X-plane within the next couple years by removing the wings and engines from a Technam P2006T light sport aircraft and replacing them with an improved version of the Leap Tech wing and motors. It's not known if the X-Plane will be light sport eligible. 
It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. This week, we're proud to say that Women in Aviation International is part of our Airborne Partnership Initiative. Known to all of us as the WAI, this organization is unique in its mission and it knows how to get the job done. The unique thing about WAI is that it represents women in every imaginable facet of aviation and aerospace. It was started in 1990 and was formally established in 1994 to encourage women to seek opportunities in aviation. Only a small percent of the aviation-related jobs in the U.S. are filled by women, and the WAI is working to help women make the impact in aviation that they're capable of. To refer to WAI as an aviation organization is an understatement. Their recent annual convention broke attendance records and was represented by just about every aviation and aerospace discipline. It's an organization that sponsors success for women, and aviation and aerospace is a vehicle. We're sure our partnership with WAI will be exciting and highly productive. After these messages, a small lithium-ion battery causes a cabin fire. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we summarize some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Pad. Christopher A. Hart has been sworn in as the chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. Hart has served as vice chairman since 2009, and he also served as a member of the board from 1990 to 1993. A fire reportedly caused by a lithium ion battery in a carry-on bag broke out on a KLM airliner as it arrived at its destination. It's reported that the fire was quickly detected and extinguished by a flight attendant. The IAM union has filed with the National Labor Relations Board seeking an election for union representation at Boeing's South Carolina facility. The union says efforts by workers to form a union have already been met with resistance from Boeing management. The Hertzell Propeller Company has appointed American Propeller Service as a recommended service facility. American Propeller of Redding, California offers propeller pickup and delivery services over a large area of the western U.S. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. This report makes you wonder if there's a department in the Navy whose job it is to create acronyms. Engineers and test pilots at the Naval Air Warfare Center Aircraft Division have transitioned the newly developed FA-18 flight control software called Magic Carpet from the virtual world of the simulator to actual flight. Magic Carpet is an acronym for, now pay attention, Maritime Augmented Guidance with Integrated Controls for Carrier Approach and Recovery Precision Enabling Technologies. The software is designed to make landing on an aircraft carrier easier by maintaining a commanded glide slope and angle of attack, giving the pilot the opportunity to focus more attention on maintaining a proper lineup. 
Test pilots from VX-23, working closely with engineers of the Atlantic Test Rangers, will put the flight control system through its paces over the next few weeks, with a myriad of approaches and touch-and-go landings in preparation for the initial shipboard testing. Well, that's our program for Thursday, March 19th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday. Join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.